Hey guys, True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So I'm coming to you today with the what's next on Demetrius Andre, the undefeated WBO middleweight champion. He returned to the ring, made his fourth successful world title defense of his title that he won back in 2018 when he scored a convincing but unimpressive 12 round unanimous decision over Liam Williams, his mandatory challenger. You know, he knocked, scored a knockdown early. Looks like he might finish it early, but um, but uh, what's his name came on strong, Williams, and fought hard all the way down the stretch. Ended up being a pretty good fight. Ended in a unanimous decision, but again, kind of unimpressive. So Andre talked about moving up to 168 prior to this fight, or he could stay at 160. I'm just gonna run through the top 10 in both divisions real quick just to see what could be an option for him because obviously he he's frustrated. He wants a big time fight, but none of these guys want to fight him and he doesn't understand why, but he should because he's an unattractive fight and there's not a lot of money that you're going to be brought in to fight a guy that's going to make you look bad, you know? And that is the prototypical example of high risk, low reward, you know? No one's going to give you a lot of props if you beat this guy, if you beat Andre. You know, because Andre hasn't really done that much. And Andre has to almost look vulnerable, which he did a little bit against Liam Williams, in order to draw those big fight fights in against the bigger fighters. So let's run through the top 10 at middleweight, then we'll go to super middleweight and see what could be next for Demetrius Andre. Start with number one at middleweight, and that is the IBF champion, Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. He's not interested in this fight. He's looking around for an opponent for the summer, and then it looks like he's loading up for a unification bout against Ryota Murata on New Year's Eve. That's the rumor as of right now for Triple G. I don't think he gives Andre the time of day. Maybe, but I don't think so. Number two is the undefeated Jermall Charlo. The only way I see this happening is if Charlo decides, you know, fuck it, I want to unify belts. I'll, I'll, I want to shut this guy up. It goes after Andre. But I really don't think he's going to do that. I mean, look at who he's fighting in his next fight. Juan Maciel. That dude, is, that, that dude does not belong in a title fight with with Charlo. Charlo's just playing it safe as he's that, like he's done for years. And he's not going to take the risk and take a guy on like like him. So, no, I don't see that one. Andre's number three. Number four for me is, um, I believe it's Sergey Daryavchenko is still my number four fighter. And Daryavchenko coming off that loss to Charlo in September of last year. Maybe he'd want to go for a title fight for a fourth year in a row. He'd want to go after a world title. I don't know. Maybe he would. But um, Andre, he, just out of desperation, might might want to take that fight, to be honest. he might. He, Andre might just want to say, hey, fuck it, I'll fight him. You know, let's do this. But, you know, obviously he wants to go after the bigger fights. And we don't know what it would do, but at least... If he dominated on uh, dominated Darivinchenko, he could say, "Hey, I'm still on this. I'm on the same level as Charlo." Or flip side, what if he was vulnerable and looked so-so against Darivinchenko, and Darivinchenko looked better against him than he did against Charlo? Maybe, maybe that draws Charlo out right there into a unification bout later. So Darivinchenko's an option. Number five is Chris Eubank Jr. Our Ryota Murata is actually number five. Murata's looking for a stay busy opponent during the summer and then, like I said, a, un a possible unification against Triple G on New Year's Eve. So that's what he's looking at. That's the rumor right now. Number six is Chris Eubank Jr. Um, Eubank is floating between 160 and 168. I think he's trying to line himself up just for a big fight. He's been out of the, been out of the ring. I think he's going to take a tune up next. I don't think he's he wants to fight Andre. I really don't. Maybe, but I don't see it. But you never know with Eubank. It's kind of up in the air. Number seven is Jaime Minguia. I mean, maybe Minguia is interested in this. Maybe he wants Triple G in June. I honestly don't know, but I don't. I'm going to lean towards the no. Minguia being interested in an Andre fight right now. I'm going to lean towards the no. But maybe. Number eight is Rob Brandt, the former world champion. I think a fight with Brandt is possible if Andre wants to, if, if, if two sides want to cross the street because 
Andre, or Rob Brand never got his third fight that was in the contract with Rio de Murata. And I know he's suing his promoter and his manager right now. And, you know, that might hold him up for a while, but maybe he can get a title shot with Andre in the meantime, you know, and work it out. But the two sides would have to come together. They're both avoided fighters. They're both talented fighters. I think it's a good matchup. I think Andre should take it, but will he is the big question. Will Eddie Hearn want him to take it? That's another big question. We don't know. So I have to lean towards the no, you know. Um, Liam Williams, uh, Kanat Islam are guys that are sitting back there that in the th back of the top ten that could possibly be opponents and options, but does Andre want to want to face, you know, Williams again, likely not. Does he want to face Islam, an undefeated fighter, who's yeah hasn't been super impressive and hasn't really doesn't really have a big resume? That's that's the downfall, and we don't know. We I, we doubt it at this point, but he might have to. At super middleweight for Andre, if he moved up in weight, you got Canelo Alvarez number one. Obviously, that's the fight that he wants. Would Canelo be into fighting him in December? After Canelo's done with Billy Joe, which most people feel he's going to win. After he's done with Caleb Plant in September, which most people feel he's going to win that one too. Would he want to fight a guy like Andre later on in the year? Andre would probably wait for that fight if Canelo said it was an option. But does Canelo want to do that? Another low-level name in the year after three in a row? Actually, four in a row if you include Callum Smith. Those aren't big, huge superstar names. Canelo's trying to become undisputed for his legacy, but also to draw some of these other guys that want to fight him that are big names, especially like Triple G and like uh, Charlo at 160. So I don't know. I just don't know if 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 Canelo, you know, I don't think Canelo's going to be want to fight Andre. It just what's the point? It's high risk, low reward, and you know, I, I just don't think that fight makes sense for him. Um, number two for me is Daniel Jacobs. You know, it's a makeable fight, but does Jacobs want this fight? And I just don't think he does, so I'm going to lean towards a no. Number three is um, former unified champ, our former champion, Callum Smith. I think Callum Smith might take the fight if he decides to stay at 168, but to be honest, I think Callum Smith is moving up to, uh, I think Callum Smith I'm, is moving up to 175, but if Andre wanted that smoke, I think Callum Smith might say, hey, come up to 168 and fight me then. But I don't know. It's one of those fights where I don't know if Andre wants to do that. I don't know if Callum Smith wants to stay at 168. So it's an option, both with the zone, but does it make sense? We got to see. Number four is uh, the undefeated former two-time champ, David Benavides. I don't see the PBC and the zone coming together for this one. Um, so I'm going to say no. Number five is the undefeated IBF champion, Caleb Plant. Um, again, Plant is lining himself up for a showdown with Canelo in September. So I don't see him and Andre being an option or happening. Number six is the undefeated WBO champion, Billy Joe Saunders. Well, he's with the zone. If he were to beat Canelo, maybe if he were to upset Canelo and it's, and it's such a one-sided fight that Canelo either is injured or gets his ass whipped and doesn't want to fight him again, which I don't see that happening, maybe Andre fights him, you know, but I highly doubt any of those go down, so I'm going to say no to a Billy Joe Saunders fight, even though they're both the same promotion. Um, you know, number seven is Anthony Durrell. Uh, I think it's Anthony. I know it's John Ryder. Um, that's, of course, is an option, but the last I heard is John Ryder is loading up to challenge David Morrell for the WBA regular championship next, so not sure if this one is possible. At uh, at uh, for Andre at 168. Um, number eight is I believe Lionel Thompson. Uh, Thompson would probably be down to fight, but Thompson um, is an avoided fighter, and I'm pretty sure he's with the PBC. But is that a fight? That, is that a fight that makes sense for Andre? And I don't think so. And then rounding out the top ten are um, Anthony Durrell and I think it was what was the guy's name that Durrell just fought. Um, anyways, you know, I don't think Andre is going to get together with the PBC to make those fights happen. So, you know, Andre, he's in that spot. You know, someone 
I hope somebody does fight him so we can see how good he really is. But I just don't see anybody getting in line right now and being 150% down to, to take on that fight. And, you know, that hurts him, but it is what it is. You know, it's kind of a combination of his style that has made it that way. And, um, you know, that's a hard style to market right there. He's been a hard fighter to market um, his whole career. And he may not understand it, but that's the rules of the game, you know. Um, and, you know, a lot of these south slick southpaws that don't take a lot of risk in the ring, they don't get a lot of those big fights. That's just it. They don't get a lot of those guys that want to fight him because even if those guys win, they look bad beating a guy like him, you know. And that's why, you know, it's, it's just it's high risk, low reward. And you're taking a big chance of losing – just and if you win you're not going to look great and I think we've seen a lot of years of example of fighters like that with that kind of style and it's come back to burn uh top name fighters and and hurt their career so you know it's it's a hard sell right there so you know that's where we're at so that's it that's what's next on Demetrius Andre hope you guys enjoyed it true boxing you've been hit with the truth